Trinidad and Tobago's economy is based significantly on energy and includes many subsectors which thrive because of their direct or indirect relation to our fossil fuel industry. In the early 1900s, fossil fuels began to overtake our agricultural sector as the main driver of our economy, where the first supplies that we discovered and began extracting were oil. But soon after, we began monetizing our abundant natural gas reserves as well. In fact, now, where our economy still depends greatly on fossil fuels, the greatest contributors from natural gas. Let's take a look at how things work today. Trinidad is an island which is surrounded not only by water, but natural gas. The country experienced three decades of continuous growth in natural gas production, peaking at 4.3 billion standard cubic feet per day in 2010. Since then, the gas companies have experienced a steady decline to 3.3 billion standard cubic feet per day in 2016. The National Gas Company, or NGC, plays a crucial role in distributing gas to several end users. These are power generation, petrochemicals, and liquefied natural gas. In managing the distribution of gas, existing policy ensures that the first priority is all of our daily lives. That is, the supply of natural gas for electricity generation to meet our needs at home, work, and all critical services such as hospitals. But what does this mean? Let's explore it. As a matter of great interest, and where there is sometimes a misconception, electricity is not actually generated by TN Tech, but by independent power producers it contracts to convert gas to electrical energy after which it is distributed to you and me. Once our electricity generation needs are met, NGC then supplies its next major customers at the Point Nisas Industrial Estate, a valuable sector of our economy which has created thousands of direct and indirect jobs over the years. Every molecule of natural gas which goes through Point Nisas is used to create downstream products for local use and export, such as methanol, ammonia and steel. These products generate significantly more total income than the gas alone much of which is valuable foreign revenue in US dollar currency. The petrochemical sector has played a major role in TNT's wealth, success and growth on the world stage. But today, TNT is facing a natural gas shortage. This means that with every unit of gas going to generate electricity for local consumption, the shortage is felt even stronger at the industrial estate. When Point Lisas is unable to meet its production goals of valuable downstream products, job opportunities are reduced along with loss of foreign revenue into the economy. In addition to these missed opportunities, there is another great loss also being faced in this scenario. And this is because the price of gas paid for local power generation is much lower than its true market value because of policies which support our electricity subsidy. To understand this point, let's look at analysis from the Energy Chamber in one recent year, 2017. NGC supplied about 252 million standard cubic feet per day of gas for electricity generation in TNT, where the purchase price for this gas at TN Tech was approximately 130 million US dollars. If it were instead sold at its true market price to Point Nisas, it would have been worth 300 million US. And downstream products such as ammonia and methanol would have generated an estimated further 140 million US dollars income for the economy from taxes and sustained up to 1500 additional direct and indirect jobs. The losses which NGC and the government of TNT face each year due to the excessive consumption of electricity at are naturally low prices is known as the opportunity cost. This varies from year to year based on the world market price of gas. Meanwhile, the sale price of gas to TNT has remained almost constant over the years. Let's take a look now at a fixed time period between 2012 and 2017. We can see that our loss incurred was approximately 3.7 billion US dollars. This is a large amount which could have been used instead to build 50,000 new houses, 560 schools, 104 health centers, or 17 hospitals. Of course, these facts don't mean our supply of local electricity shouldn't be priority. But roadmap studies have now shown that certain projects in energy efficiency upgrades and renewable energies could be transformative in terms of solutions for TNT. This is what this video series is designed to bring to you. But to do so, we first need to understand where we are coming from. Stay tuned for video 2 in this series where we will take a closer look at our electricity subsidy and video 3 where we will see what some of these projects are.